Hello, I'm Paul Esposito. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at the Oxygen Simperfecta Clinic at the Children's Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha, as well as the University of Nebraska Medical Center. This video is going to cover the basics of splinting of a child with Oxygen Simperfecta when they have an acute injury at home. This was germinated from an opportunity that I had with Dr. Mary Peterson at the Osteogenesis Simperfecta Conference, where parents expressed an interest in learning how to do the basics of splinting until their children could receive definitive medical care. The first thing we're going to do today is show you how to do a basic cooptation splint or uh, something you can use for a humerus fracture when the child's hurting in the arm up by the shoulder. Because basically the principles are always to go to the joint above, to the joint below, and do whatever you need to do to prevent rotation or twisting. These are basic materials that we're going to have in our kit and, and provide the families when we can introductory. This is actually made by 3M. It's called Scotch uh, Cast. It's a very lightweight fiberglass material that comes pre-padded. Uh, and again, I'm not recommending this product specifically. I think anything you use should be lightweight and be able to be kept at home for a long period of time. And any of these materials come in a 2-inch, 3-inch, or 4-inch. Uh, what we're going to use for this cooptation splint is a 2-inch because Noah, who's our cooperative and very helpful assistant who's presently eating gummy bears, mm -hmm. is uh, about that size. So I think 2-inch and 3-inch is probably what you got to keep at home. Although this is pre-padded, you should also have some basic cast padding available because other type of splinting material don't come pre-padded. And you can always use this to add a little bit more uh, padding to the edges. The other thing we'll show you at the very end is something Mary Peterson showed me how to do is just cut back the material and put over the foam over the end so it doesn't dig into your child. Moleskin is another material you'll hear about that you can pad sharp edges with. Now Noah here does not have OI, but he's a very cooperative, very nice young man. He's going to assist us today in doing this coaptation splint. And one of the problems is that every time the kids have a fracture, the first and most important thing is to stay calm. Especially the first time you and your child experience a fracture, your, your first thing is to panic and you really have to stay calm. Ideally, you have someone else with you to help to calm the child, soothe the child. If that takes you letting them watch a movie, do an iPad, listen to music, whatever you need to do, stay calm. Uh, and unfortunately for kids with OI, this is just part of life. Uh, if you get panicky, the child will get panicky and the pain gets worse. Don't be afraid to give them a little bit of oral pain medicine, and that's well described in the parents' websites and the OI Foundation website, but stay calm. Ideally, again, you have another person to help you. And one of the things you can easily do is just gently put a little traction on the extremity, regardless of what it is, but avoid sudden movements, twisting. So keeping things stable and steady is probably the ideal thing to do. Uh, and again, we're doing this to demonstrate how would I immobilize a humerus if I was concerned the child was hurting. You can certainly use a posterior splint that goes up and around, and that'll be on another part of this video. But we're going to do a co-optation splint that comes up and around. And again, as we introduced, this material has a felt backing, and there's also a type of product with a foam backing. Some parents like one, some like the other. You can see there's the thicker foam side to it, and this thinner side on the outside, which is the outside portion. Now this is obviously too long, and perhaps even a little bit too thick, but you'll find that you never really find the perfect size in a prefabricated splint. So if you're going to keep one, it's better to keep one that's too big rather than too small. Then we cut it to the appropriate length. Again, the, uh, my assistant Bridget is holding his arm steady. You have to wet this material to help it set quicker and smoother. Wring it out as much as you can. Having a bath towel available to dry it really helps. You can just sponge it off. And then again, the assistant holds steady, no sudden movements. We want to bring it up and over his shoulder. And again, you can see I've tucked it in his armpit. It's over his shoulder. It's probably too long. Don't worry about that until you're done. Now, I'm going to use an ace wrap. Uh, some people like to use Coban. I have some concerns about Coban only 
It's a wonderful the product. This is the Band-Aid, Oma. This is the Band-Aid. Isn't it cool? We just want to tuck it around. Not so tight that it cuts off the circulation, but snug enough that it just kind of holds and conforms the bandage. And again, we have the padded side against the skin, up over the shoulder. And again, I'm going to peel this down, and this is something Mary Peterson showed me again that a lot of the families have found to be helpful. Just peel that open. Cut off the excessive amount. And then just fold it back and over. The sharp edges are something that seem to bother the children. You don't want it rubbing into their skin. And again, bring it around and over the shoulder. And don't worry about how fancy it looks. Just make sure it's snug but not excessively tight. Then afterwards, you can either put the child in a sling, which many of them won't use, uh, or if you can get a t-shirt over and safety pin the t-shirt to the chest portion of the shirt, uh, because the kids obviously be bothered if they rotate their arm. And these will take three or four minutes to get hard. And again, during that time, you want to calm the child as much as you can. So if you find a sharp edge on the splint whenever you get done, let it dry. And then you can use something like moleskin, which is just an adhesive backed tape. You cut a strip about the right size. And this is something you really can't do with gloves. And then peel off the back. And again, you want the splint to be dry when you do this. You can see there's just a bit of a rough edge on that coaptation splint that we just did. So then you can just tuck it over, fold it over, and it gives you a nice padded area for your splint. And this is usually just on the ends of the splint. Occasionally you'll find a rough edge on the side. What we're going to demonstrate now is a basic co-optation splint. If you're concerned about your child's form, you can take your cast padding. Again, you have someone calming him, someone helping you hold. Then we're going to measure that out. And you can even do it on the child. The material we're going to use this time is going to be plast basic plaster of Paris. So we've measured our length, and I'm going to go back and get my scissors and my material. And it's making a little crinkly noise for the camera, but this comes pre-wrapped in plastic, so it can be kept on the shelf for a long time or in your first aid kit. And again, we measure the length, lay out eight layers. More layers than that can actually burn, and eight layers is almost always strong enough. And again, it should be about the same length as your padding. Perhaps your padding can be a little bit longer. And for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to make it a whole eight thicknesses. And then you can tear this off when you get the right length. Then again, you take it off the padding. And I'm going to take it to the back and put it in some warm water, not hot water, but warm water. And then when you're doing this, you can basically just smooth out the edges. Lay it back onto your padding. And I'm going to put another layer of padding over it. So I've got two or three thicknesses underneath. So we have it well padded. We slide it around and just U-shape around his arm. Okay. And we take our ace wrap and start around the wrist. Again, not too tight. And this ace wrap is probably a little bit big. You should probably have a two inch and a three inch ace wrap in your kit. And again, it locks up around the elbow. The water again should be warm, not cold, and it shouldn't be hot because that can make it generate too much heat. 
then just mold it together with your palms and it takes it about five or six minutes to set up. And that will help control the rotation of the arm. We hope that you find this uh, video helpful in terms of doing basic first aid and care for your child until you can get them to a definitive care facility. We also want to thank the manufacturer of the splinting material that we used, which I found to be lightweight and very helpful and has a long storage life. There are certainly many products on the market that are, are helpful. I'm not endorsing any one particular one. I just think you need to look for something that's lightweight, that has a lifespan that can be useful for you. If you have other questions or concerns, you can certainly contact our clinic or the OI Foundation website, which is very, very helpful.